11 Tucson now. News at 9. Right now on Fox 11 Tucson now as the entire nation celebrates Independence Day, Tucsonans enjoy a storm-free evening perfect for fireworks here in the desert. Plus, we are taking you inside Tucson's emergency call center tonight on the busiest night of the year. And unfortunately, every year, some celebrations turn deadly. What's being done to keep you safe from impaired drivers tonight? And good evening, and thank you for joining us on this 4th of July. I'm Craig Thomas. And I'm Heather Owen for Teresa Jun. Happy Independence Day. We're glad you're with us. And 4th of July is a day off, a celebration mm -hmm. for most of us. But 911 operators are hard at work keeping up with a high volume of calls from fireworks, to fires, illegal fireworks, gunshots. It is a busy night. It is one of the busiest nights of the year for them. Fox 11's Matt Mendez sat down with an operator this evening. He sat side by side with the operator as the chaos happened. He's joining us now at a neighborhood block party with more on the people who work the holidays so all of us can celebrate safely. Matt? That's right, Heather. There were no problems here at this Northwest Side neighborhood block party. They're keeping the fireworks legal, but as for others around the city, they kept 911 dispatchers very busy answering phone calls. You can't do anything that shoots straight up into the air. And by sunset, 911 operators in Tucson started to receive dozens of calls about illegal fireworks. Police response in the city depends on what the caller says. The operator will get a sense of the urgency, whether they think it's legitimately a gunshot or firework, and if there are a pattern of calls in the same area. Last 4th of July, they had around 650 calls in an eight-hour period. That's double than what they'd normally get on any average night. And because of staffing shortages, they have the same number of communicators working as any other night. Gets a lot of suspicious activity calls, suspicious people calls, obviously the shots fired, um, and it's just really the unknown. Uh, a lot of the fireworks sound like gunshots and they want to, you know, err on the side of caution, so they call us. And I'm told uh, tonight and New Year's Eve are the two busiest nights of the year. And right now it's at the peak hours. Uh, dispatchers say calls normally uh, have a high volume between 6 p.m. and 3 a.m. And also last year, six citations were issued for people lighting off illegal fireworks in the city of Tucson. Reporting live on the northwest side, Matt Mendes, Fox 11, Tucson Now. Well, taking a look at weather outside right now, we're not seeing as much storms as we saw last night, but we're still watching a couple cells popping up across Cochise County. You can see most of the radar quiet, except the southern end Cochise County. If you pop up thunderstorms right now, nothing too heavy. Right near Bisbee, you can see a few cells right there, pretty much the same location as last night. Heavy rainfall, not really seeing much else with these storms. Most of the flow came from Greenlee County, and those storms just kind of rode the border of New Mexico down into Arizona, and we're watching those storms uh, continuing to fire up at this time. Dew points, well, they've been high the past couple of days. Not as high as we like to see them, but we've seen them above that average line, that average line right there in the blue. 54 degrees, that magical dew point number. Well, we've been there the past, the first and second day of the month, but we fell a little bit by the third, and today we're averaging right around 52. As we go into the weekend, dew points staying about the same, chances of rain in the forecast as well. Heather? All right, thanks, Dan. Some major progress to report tonight on the wildfire that killed 19 elite firefighters near Prescott. The Yarnell Hill fire is now at 80% containment. As the fire lines move in on the deadly blaze, it was just 45% earlier in the day, so this is major, major progress. Crews continuing to think, get things under control, and the fire hasn't grown in size today, which is good news. About 13 square miles have been destroyed so far, but conditions remain dangerous on the front lines, and there are still more than 600 firefighters fighting this. Meanwhile, the investigation continues into whether the 19 fallen members of the hotshot crew should have been pulled from the fire sooner. And as communities all over the country come together to celebrate on this 4th of July, people who live in Prescott held a somber gathering to commemorate the ultimate sacrifice of those 19 firefighters. Stephanie Elam reports from Prescott. The 4th of July, a time for remembering American heroes. And in Prescott, it's a tribute to 19 young men that's bringing this town closer. Coming together, I think, is the only way. I mean, if any, anybody is, is lost in the tragedy on their own, the whole community will suffer. In an impromptu show of respect, civilians and firefighters lined the streets as the two Granite Mountain hotshot buggies returned from the fire line, just as they've always done, but this time with a procession and without the men who rode in them. 
the two white buggies that were the Granite Mountain Hotshots, that was their home away from home. That is where they lived out of, whether, whether they were in Idaho, Texas, California, or Yarnell. As they passed, these firefighters saluted their lost brothers and fought back tears. It's like any fire department, fire family in the, in the country. It's, a, it's, it's like your second family. Throughout town, there are signs of love for the hot shots, flags everywhere, most at half staff. And many people here are compelled to just do something. We've been busy nonstop since this morning. We've had a line of cars constantly. Yeah, we can start driving now. These kids are washing cars to raise money for the families of the victims. I heard about it on Facebook and truck needed a wash. So I figured I'd donate to the firefighters that fell. Others are adding to the memorial along the fence of Station 7. I grabbed 19 red roses for uh, each individual and one white one just to signify the town and the strength that everybody has. A town standing together to honor its patriots who gave the most. That's the nature of a fireman. That's the nature of these 19 guys. Um, they wanted to give so badly they laid down their lives in order to do that. And you're listening and watching the Tucson Fire Department honoring the fallen crew members of the Granite Mountain Hot Shots. This happened this morning. You heard the bagpipes, the bells ringing, flags were lowered to half staff, and the names of the 19 firefighters who were killed were read in a solemn dedication to their service. And our coverage of the wildfire tragedy in Arizona continues on air, online, and on your mobile device. Look for updates. There's still so much investigation, and the fire continues uh, to be fought out there. Go to News 13, Fox 11, and TucsonNewsNow.com, as well as our Tucson News Now fa Facebook page and Twitter. We're also pushing alerts to the Tucson News Now mobile app. Tonight, we are learning that the prison fire is still 50% contained, but the good news is, is that the fire uh, is expected to be fully contained by this weekend. It is burning near the old prisoner of war camp in the Catalina Mountains in extremely rocky, rough and difficult terrain. It started by lightning on Sunday evening. And also we have new details on the Dean Peak fire that is burning near Kingman in Arizona's northwest corner. The evacuated communities of Pinion Pines and Pine Lake remain safe tonight. Fire crews were able to protect these subdivisions by using an existing fuel break that was established by the Bureau of Land Management 10 years ago. There are no new closures or evacuations there today, but road closures are still in place. We have new details tonight as a bicyclist hit by a semi truck has now died from his injuries. 19 year old Albert Rich died today. He was hit by a semi yesterday at the intersection of Broadway and Keno Parkway. Police say the truck driver was making a right turn when the semi rig clipped the bike. Rich was then pulled beneath the tractor trailer. Police continue to investigate. At this point, no criminal charges have been filed. And we also learned today the pedestrian hit by a car last week at Grant and Arcadia. That person has died. He's identified as 45 year old Eddie Sagastume. Police say the driver hit the man while heading east on Grant and the victim was crossing at the Arcadia intersection. The intersection was lit. It did have street lamps and there was a marked crosswalk at that location. The investigation continues. This is just into our newsroom. We are being told that a toddler almost drowns in a midtown pool after being found at the bottom of it. Tucson Fire responding to the area of Prince and Romero at about 7 o'clock tonight for a near drowning involving a three-year-old boy. The toddler was unconscious as he was pulled out of the pool. An adult administered CPR until Tucson Fire Department officials showed up at the scene. Tucson Fire paramedics assessed the boy and quickly took him to the hospital for more medical care. Stay with Fox 11 and KLD News 13 for updates. Coming up, Arizona, not the only western state dealing with wildfires. Details on a new fire that is burning just west of Las Vegas. And the old government is out. What's next for Egypt? We'll have more on that just ahead. You are watching Fox 11 Tucson Now. I'm Craig Thomas. And I'm Heather Rowan. Right now on our website, keep up to date with Arizona's wildfires with our special page. It is always being updated online at TucsonNewsNow.com slash wildfires.
firefighters in Nevada continuing to fight a wildfire near Mount Charleston today. The fire just west of Las Vegas remains at 0% containment. About 150 firefighters along with two air tankers are trying to put this fire out in time before it starts destroying homes. Residents preparing to evacuate their homes as the fire is spreading quickly through pinion juniper trees. At one point we were told that we had to get out of our house. We're one of the very last houses at the end of the mountain and the fire's going, that they're gonna start is gonna be right directly behind our house. Lightning started this fire on Monday. The fire has burned over 1,200 acres as of tonight. Craig. We have late breaking news to tell you about. We want to show you a live picture of what is going on at this moment. Uh, these are the Marana fireworks and what you see there is a fire. Uh, the Marana fireworks started going off just a few minutes ago. You see some of the fireworks uh, still going off, but then uh, somehow something caught a brush fire. We can hear uh, folks on the ground can hear the fire engines responding. Uh, so we have a situation that is going on just started moments ago and we will continue to follow this. Uh, we will send crews there and get exactly what is going on uh, as we knew this could happen just because of the the time of year and the danger that is in our area at this time. But so in the Marana fireworks, which is at uh, the Arizona pavilions, uh, as they started going off, that is what has happened and crews are now responding. And now to a developing story as well. The ongoing chaos in Egypt meant that the July 4th holiday was actually a work day for President Obama and his national security team. Fox News foreign affairs correspondent Wendell Gola reports on how the U.S. is walking a fine line when it comes to the Egypt situation. President Obama is expressing concern at the Egyptian president's ouster, but he's carefully avoiding criticizing Egypt's military. For the second day in a row, he met with his national security team in the Situation Room. After yesterday's meeting, he released a written statement that said in part, quote, I now call on the Egyptian military to move quickly and responsibly to return full authority back to a democratically elected civilian government as soon as possible. Mr. Obama avoided using the word coup, suggesting he's trying to avoid suspending U.S. aid to Egypt, though he ordered a review. Mideast expert John Alterman feels he may be buying time. I think the president is going to be able to avoid using the word coup long enough to see what is evolving and keep something in place that will allow us to sustain a close strategic relationship with Egypt, which is very much in the U.S. government interest. Days before President Morsi's removal, Mr. Obama personally urged him to respond to his critics, saying democracy is about more than elections. Now, retired General Jack Keane says the Muslim Brotherhood needs to be involved in forming a new government. You don't want them outside of it. Far too many of the ones on the right then will go to guns as opposed to the political process. But John Alderman says it's hard for a country with no real experience with democracy to grasp what it means to be inclusive. It's easier for the public to say what they're against. It's harder to build the consensus for what you're for. And the real problem in Egypt now is moving forward. On Capitol Hill, few pine for Morsi. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor said, quote, the Egyptian people have made clear that President Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood government has threatened the pluralistic democracy for which they called two years ago. The Arab world was deeply divided. Turkey and Tunisia condemned Morsi's ouster. Saudi Arabia and Qatar welcomed it. Egypt's military may be the most trusted institution in the country, but Alderman warns it's not clear it can set up a political system that operates without its control. My sense is their instincts aren't the right instincts to allow for diversity. That's also what we saw out of the Brotherhood. After today's national security meeting, Mr. Obama's aides phoned their counterparts in Egypt and a number of Middle East countries, including Israel, Turkey, and Qatar, were told they stressed the importance of restoring full authority to a democratically elected civilian government as soon as possible. At the White House, Wendell Gohler, Fox News. Live picture is outside for you right now. This is late breaking news. This is the Marana fireworks show and a brush fire has started in this area. This is happening near I-10 and Cortero. We do have a crew on the scene and we are also getting new video just into our newsroom of exactly when this started. It's pretty incredible pictures that we are getting ready to show you in just a minute. This happened in the last 10, last 15 minutes. It just started as the fireworks started and we will stay on top of this story during the rest of the newscast. 
Late breaking news. This is out of the northwest side. Morana fireworks show. You are looking at live pictures right now. There is a brush fire that has just started in the last five to ten minutes or so. And you can see the flames are huge, a ton of smoke. We have a crew on the scene right now. We are getting new video pictures in. It's a pretty incredible sight. And as you can imagine, a ton of people are out there watching the fireworks. And the fireworks started just about 9 o'clock. And then only a few minutes later, suddenly, somehow, something caught on fire. And then you see this. There are many uh, fire trucks that are on their way to the scene. Uh, and we have some video that we will bring you within minutes that shows exactly what some of the flames look like when they were just starting to hit. And the pictures are pretty incredible, so stay with us right here on Fox 11. Also, we have new information uh, coming in by the moment about this fire. We do know that the fireworks are still going off. No word on how big this brush fire is or if anybody has been hurt, but with all indications of the fireworks still going off, things are likely okay, at least for the people who are standing by. Yeah, obviously there are so many uh, crews that are on um, on duty anyway mm -hmm. on a night like tonight. So they're obviously uh, keeping updated on what's going on. And since uh, we are hearing more fireworks, uh, just like you said, that means that they are aware of what's going on and uh, still say that it's safe enough to continue to do what they're, they're doing. They're prepared for things like this, and we know that it is very dry outside. There's a lot of brush in this area, so we will keep you updated within the newscast, so stay with us. City of Tucson and Pima County fireworks celebrations are starting right now. Yeah, they're starting uh, as well, and Fox 11's Kevin Adger, he has one of the best seats in town. He's on the U of A campus. Good evening, Kevin. Hey, good evening, guys. Craig and Heather, I have to agree with you. I do have one of the best seats in town for the fireworks. I'm going to step out of shot so you can see uh, the A Mountain fireworks. We're here on the top level of the Park Avenue garage at Park and Speedway. And one of the great things about being up here, you can see the A Mountain fireworks. You could also see the fireworks in Marana, and you could also see the fireworks at Keno Stadium after the baseball game. Now, one thing we got here around 7 p.m., and there was one family here, but now there's started to be a pretty huge crowd out here. I did. I expected it to be packed. I expect people to start rolling in and setting up. Why not? Oh, that just amazed me. I'm even more happy. I was excited to be here to begin with. Now we get to see three shows. That makes up for the past six years. So another look at the fireworks at A Mountain. And the reason why George is seeing the fireworks for the first time in six years, he was always working on the 4th. So a great spot here atop of the Park Avenue garage at Park and Speedway. Kevin Adger, Fox 11, Tucson Now. Well, taking a look at those current weather conditions, and we've got some drier air in place. Now, the good news, it's not totally dry. So we got some relief there uh, with some of these fires going on, but our temperature to the, this afternoon, 106. We should be at 102. Look at that record, 114. Far away from that. Some good news there. All right, so right now, temperatures outside still fairly warm. It is 98 degrees for Tucson. We're going 102 Phoenix. High country still looking at decent temperatures at 71 degrees. Taking a live look at that satellite radar, a lot of clouds getting pushed into most of southern Arizona thanks to storms that fired up in Greenlee County. Those are pushing to the south and we're watching some storms just now getting their act together near Sierra Vista. Nothing around the Tucson metro area. We're just watching those clouds continue to push through and some stronger cells near Bisbee. All thanks to high pressure giving us that chance of rain, but as we go into the weekend, the high moves straight over Arizona. That's not going to give us much of a flow, so any storms that develop are going to stall out. So that means a lot of rain and some damages could occur and flooding. We'll have to watch if any storms do develop through the weekend. But into next week, that high moves back towards California. Easterly flow moves back in. Better rain chance as we go into next week. That's probably still five, six days away. 100 on Saturday. We may not even get to 100. These numbers are optimistic. Up to 102 Sunday. We dry out quite a bit Sunday into Monday. Our temperatures, yeah, 101 on Wednesday and Thursday. Slight chance of seeing some thunderstorms back in the forecast. We're looking at about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain for mid next week. I'll have more on your weather coming up in a little bit later on in the show. All right, back to the late breaking news that we have been telling you about since the top of the newscast. We are getting pictures of Morana's fireworks show, and we know that there is a brush fire that is ignited because of the fireworks. We have live pictures, as you are seeing right now, as this unfolds. Some incredible viewer pictures and video just coming into our newsroom. We are working on bringing those to you as soon as we can. At this point, we don't know how big this 
brush fire is. But we do know from some of our, our crews that are in the scene that it is growing and it's growing rapidly. Fire crews, of course, were already on hand as they always are every year because of the firework danger and because of all of the brush that we have in the area. I can still see some of the fireworks going off at this point. So that indicates to us that people are safe in the area. However, this fire is growing rapidly. So here's the picture. These are new pictures, brand new video into our newsroom right now of this fire that has just started at the Morana Fireworks Show. This is happening on the northwest side of town at I-10 and Cortero at the Arizona Pavilions, and you're probably familiar with that area. This is a highly populated area near Continental Ranch, and a lot of people are very close to this, as you can see. We have crews that are in the area right now. We are waiting for some of our reporters to get new information on this uh, and to get some live reports out of the area. But the fireworks still going off at this point. Uh, we have been tracking this since the beginning. Again, this has probably been happening for the last mm, 15 minutes or so. No word on how big this fire is or when you know crews are going to be able to get a handle on it but I did get some more video in that I'm looking at right now where firefighters are dousing the flames. Our meteorologist uh, Dan Bronis uh, is obviously working on the weather and the conditions outside and he's going to keep us up to date on what's going on. We'll be right back. Bringing you late breaking developments of course on the Morana fire that is burning right now. This went off right as the fireworks of the Morana show started, which was about 20 minutes ago, 20, 30 minutes ago at this point. And these are live pictures of the fireworks, but just below a brush fire is burning. And we are being told by some of our crews on the scene that firefighters are dousing the flames. Originally, it was huge from what it looked like. I mean, enormous flames. And now we are seeing some of the pictures into our newsroom of firefighters using their hoses in different directions and just absolutely, you know, just dousing this to make sure that it doesn't get any bigger at this point. But there is a lot of brush in this area and a lot of people are out there, so they want to make sure that everybody is safe. But by the indication of the fireworks still going off, it looks like they probably have it under control. We'll stay with us. And we've got news and weather straight ahead. You're watching Fox 11 Tucson Now. We'll be right back. We continue to track late breaking news on the northwest side. Right now, fire crews do have a handle on the fire that was uh, put, set off by the fireworks here in Marana on the northwest side. I'm going to step out of the way, and one of the things you're going to see is uh, not a whole lot. The fireworks show has actually come uh, to a close, and the, uh, sh the fire that had been set here is now out. Now, firefighters are continuing to douse the uh, area with water, and this is just a great reminder of how dry things are. This was a professional fireworks show out here and yet they started a, a massive brush fire. Of course, they also had the resources on scene to put that brush fire out relatively quickly. There's still a lot of smoke rising in the area, but for the most part, things are now under control here on the northwest side from the Marana show. Heather, back to you. Thanks for that report, Aaron. Meteorologist Dan Braun is in the studio now looking at some of the conditions we have outside with that fire that was caused by a firework about 30 minutes ago. High temperatures this afternoon got up to 106, but those currents, that's what we look at when we see these fires out there. Those winds, good news, they are fairly light at the airport. We're seeing a little bit of a breeze up in Marana at this time, and our temperatures are still fairly warm. We're near 100 degrees right now. That dew point number, the moisture in the air, not all too high. We're sitting at 48. We'd like to see that a little bit higher, but we are getting reports that that fire is out. Conditions are improving out there, and as we go through the night, we have a slight chance of seeing some rain, but most of the rain is going to stay off in Cochise County. Uh, more details coming up in a little bit. Heather? All right, thanks so much. Again, we're continuing to follow late breaking news from Marana. We are being told that the fire is out now, which was to be expected because crews, so many crews were in the area keeping people safe. They knew that this was a possibility. So everybody is okay and the fire is out at the fireworks show in Marana. Coming up tonight is one of the year's most deadliest nights on the roads and local law enforcement agencies are looking out for impaired drivers. We'll tell you what you need to know when we come back.
Video just in of a late breaking situation that is unfolding in Marana. We have a live picture outside right now and things have calmed down. This is at the Marana fireworks show that just ended a couple of minutes ago, but a brush fire started as soon as the fireworks show did. And you can see the cell phone video shows just how big it was. The fireworks never stopped. But the fire did and the fire kept going. It grew, but firefighters were able to get it out quickly. Nobody was hurt. And again, it is now out at this point. Fourth of July has plenty of backyard barbecues and social gatherings on the town. But when it comes to time, time comes time to drive home, there could be a problem. Fox 11's J.D. Wallace is joining us live downtown with some things that you may want to consider instead of getting behind the wheel. J.D.? Well, Heather, it's supposed to be a busy night here on 4th Avenue. At least that's what they're preparing for. You can see a row of cabs behind me. This is on 4th Avenue in front of o O'Malley's. And basically right now it still seems rather quiet. It's not that much traffic. They're still waiting for more people to show up. However, this is the kind of night that taxi cabs and tow trucks will be waiting to serve those who've been drinking. And downtown Auto Center will have 10 tow trucks ready until 6 in the morning. They're part of AAA Arizona's Tipsy Tow Program, which gives anyone, not just its members, but anyone who's had too much to drink, they can get their car towed while they and a passenger get a free ride home. Also, bars like O'Malley say they have cabs waiting outside. And of course, a cab ride is much cheaper than a DUI. Based on last night's turnout, though, O'Malley's does expect 4th Ave plenty of people out tonight. 4th Avenue is pretty busy. Uh, last night we had a pre-party, 4th of July, and there's, you know, a couple hundred people up and down the street. So it's pretty busy tonight. $20 cab ride or, you know, $5,000 fine, you know. Or, so it's pretty obvious. And Tipsy Tow will give a free tow to anyone within 10 miles of here. Also, DPS and Tucson police are on patrol tonight for anyone who's been drinking and then gets behind the wheel. And then that's not going to end just tonight. Tomorrow night, as well as Saturday night, the Southern Arizona DUI Task Force will be running saturation patrols throughout Southern Arizona. Reporting live from downtown, J.D. Wallace, Fox 11, Tucson Now. And a lot of 4th of July celebrations going on tonight with those extreme dry conditions outside. Use caution if you're going to be outside tonight, especially around those fireworks. But 4th of July today, and we had some cute pictures come in, and one of them sent in. Here's Yogi. He looks so happy to be posing with his little 4th of July handkerchief on. What a cute picture there. Hey, if you want to break from the heat this weekend, head up to Rose Canyon Lake just up in Mount Lemon. Temperatures roughly cooler, about 20 degrees cooler than we're going to see in the city, right below 90 degrees on Saturday, a 30 to 20 uh, percent chance of rain Friday, Saturday, down a little bit Sunday, but still chance of storms as we go through the weekend. And we're going to continue that in the next week. I'll more on your forecast coming up in a little bit later on in the show. Heather. All right. Thanks, Dan. Damian Alameda coming up next with sports. We'll be right back. It's about time, your time. Fox 11 Tucson Now Sports. Damian Alameda with you in what is likely the last Tucson Padres 4th of July star spangled spectacular. You knew the club wanted to make it a good one, especially considering the teams atop the division standings having just won all three road series. Tonight, the Teapods hosting Las Vegas. Might I add, darn nice to actually see some folks over at the ballpark this evening. Good sized crowd with plenty of red, white, and blue to go around. Pick up the action, bottom two, Vegas up one zip, two outs, bases full of Padres for the pitcher, Sean O'Sullivan, 51s. Not gonna have to worry about the pitcher, right? Wrong, O'Sullivan sends a shot to center. Matt Dendecker can't come up with a diving grab. Consider the bases clear. O'Sullivan, a three RBI double that puts him on second. Very next batter, Jeff Decker. Bringing his boomstick up, up, and away. The two-shot homer, his seventh with Tucson. Padres take the 5-2 lead. Tucson leading as this game heads into the seventh, 6-4 on top of Las Vegas. Diamondbacks in New York closing out against the Mets. We're going to pick it up in the 13th inning. Tied at two, bases loaded. Cody Ross gets walked. Can't do that because that forces the other run in. So D-backs take the one-run lead. Now it's up to Heath Bell to close this out, except in the bottom frame, Anthony Decker, a kid who went 0 for 5 up to this point, picks a great time to break the slump, the solo home run off Bell, and we're all tied up at 3 until top of the 14th. Martin Prado up to bat, drops a bloop single in to bring home Cliff Pennington. So good, uh, only not. Because until the bottom frame, Chaz Rowe lets Kirk Neuenheisen 
go gone. Game's tied at four, so we keep playing. Top 15, Cliff Pennington at the plate, sends a liner to the left field. Gerardo Parra come on down, and guess what? Arizona has the lead once again, so the pen not messing it up this time. Brad Ziegler closes the door. D-backs lead the majors, by the way, with their 20th win in the last at-bat. After five hours, 46 minutes, Arizona running on fumes is victorious, 5-4 to four, over New York. It was kind of a little gut check, uh, and sometimes you got to do it, and they all dug down deep inside and, and found a way to get the win. Tomorrow, the Snakes come home to host Colorado, where they will hold a special ceremony for the 19 granite mountain hotshots who were killed while battling the Yarnell Hill fire. Elsewhere around the league, Yanks, Twins, Luis Cruz pops it up into foul territory. Chris Parmley makes the outstanding catch before taking a header into the stands. Ums confirm the ball is in fact in the glove as he climbs out as you go ahead and take yet another look in slow-mo because slow-mo makes everything better. Yanks still going to win. Final score nine to five. Finally, White Sox hosting the Orioles tied at two. Bottom nine when play-by-play -play man Hawk Harrelson called this. That ball hit high. Possibly one of the more entertaining calls of the day, Steve Berthume. Spotlight's on you, dude. Spotlight's on you. Out in Provo, Utah, BYU hosting FC Tucson. The team six points behind, securing a playoff spot with three matches left. Didn't get the three points tonight. Cougars win 3-2, to two, second to last game of the season. Coming next Saturday with a visit to Los Angeles. To Wimbledon, where Sabine Lisicki punched her ticket for the women's final. She beat Agneska Ravanska in three sets and will face Marion Bartoli, who defeated Kirsten Flipkins in straight sets. The final to be played on Saturday. And finally, out on Coney Island, Joey Chestnut claiming his seventh straight title at the Nathan's famous 4th of July International Hot Dog Eating Contest by breaking his own record of 69 hot dogs in 10 minutes. As Darren Ravel pointed out on Twitter, Chestnut consumed 18 days worth of the daily recommended fat intake again in just 10 minutes. Friends out of sports, more on the Marana Fire when we return. Your Fox 11 Tucson Now first alert forecast. It's about time, your time. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Sam Braun as well. More, an update on that Marana fire coming up in just a few minutes, but the weather outside, pretty quiet. We're not seeing a whole lot going on right now. Temperature is pretty warm still, 98 degrees. That current temperature for Tucson is 82 Sierra Vista, 82 Sonoda. Got a little bit of rain down across Cochise County. And that's what we're looking at the radar here. See a little bit of green around Sierra Vista. Nothing really heavy. Most of the storms have weakened. One little sill popping up south of I-10, just to the southwest of Benson. Not really seeing a whole lot with that. Very small, isolated storm. Uh, these are continuing to move to the southwest. Probably not much of a concern the rest of the night because they're weakening quite a bit. A lot of cloud cover, though, pushed in from those storms that fired up in Greenlee County. Uh, County. So we have a lot of cloud cover at the time. This will keep temperatures fairly mild tonight. A lot of moisture in the air as well. Temperatures not dropping a whole lot. It's going to be another mild night. Let's take you through the next couple days here. Given that rain chance in the forecast as we go through tomorrow, not too much of uh, activity. You could tell by our uh, model here. A little bit of green across southeastern Arizona. Also, the White Mountains looking at a few thunderstorms. But as we go into Saturday, things change a little bit. A little bit more moisture moving up from Mexico. See most of the state, especially northern Arizona right now, underneath that green blob indicating some moisture. So we could see some storms fire up. It looks like Saturday, probably the best chance of seeing some rain as we go through the weekend. Looks to be Saturday afternoon into the evening. A few thunderstorms, heavy rain, high winds will be a concern. Then by Sunday, we'll dry out a little bit more. And it looks like we're going to take that rain chance actually out of the forecast come Monday. But things will change next week, all thanks to... A tropical depression off the coast of Mexico. A lot of cloud cover with the storm down to the south, but we're going to be watching this. It's going to ride the coast. All these little lines, these are all computer models indicating where it thinks the storm is going to take. You can see it brings it right up to Mexico. Good sign for us. Some of that moisture could get tapped up into the Gulf of Mexico. We like to see that moisten up the air across northern Mexico. That could bring some moisture back into our region middle of next week. So some showers and storms possible as we go into, say, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures tonight, very mild. 82, that forecast low Tucson. We're going 88 in Phoenix. 
Nice, comfortable 53 Flagstaff, 79 tonight in Sal's Cochise County. Looking temperatures mainly right near 70 degrees near Tombstone, Wilcox and Pierce for the temperature of the upper 60s overnight tonight. 107 tomorrow, Phoenix. We're going for 101 in Tucson. Yes, that's actually below the average. We'll take that 102 in Sal's daytime highs getting up to 93 in Wilcox, 92 tomorrow for Tombstone. Here we go, 100 on Saturday. That's the best chance of seeing some rain. 30% chance of some storms. 102 Sunday. Ah, it was dry out a little bit, but then rain chance back in the forecast Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Notice every high temperature in the triple digits. We're going to keep this streak going, it looks like. On Sunday, that would be 37 days in a row. That would be the third longest streak that ties 2007. Now Saturday, we have a chance of not hitting 100, so maybe we don't get there. And as we go into next week, if we do hit that 100 Saturday, we're probably going to break that record because those 100 stay in the forecast with that chance of rain later on into the week. Heather? All right, thanks so much, Dan. And as we have been telling you, we are following late-breaking developments out of Miranda. We have this video to show you. A viewer shot this and incredible flames as you can see and as you can imagine a very scary sight for people out at the Miranda show uh, this is just off of I-10 and Cortero this is a brush fire that ignited when a firework hit the ground and the flames and the orange glow could be seen people had a front row look at this as they were watching the fireworks and you know this area if you do know this area this has a lot of brush very dry brush but the good news is that firefighters were on hand ready for this if it happened and they managed to douse the flames rather quickly and the fireworks kept going on so that was a good indication that everybody was still okay they were out of harm's way even though when you look at that video people were awfully close to that fire we're watching fox 11 tucson now we'll be right back We are live at the fireworks display in Mirana. The fireworks just ended, but I want to show you exactly what's going on. You see some fire crews still spraying some water. A fire started during the fireworks. It has now been put out, but we will explain exactly what happened coming up on KOLD News 13 at 10. All right, thanks so much. And again, as uh, Craig was telling you about that Marana fireworks show, I mean, the conditions out there, fortunately, were okay with the wind. Is that right? Yeah, the winds weren't too breezy. There was a slight breeze outside, but luckily nothing strong. So, you know, those winds didn't pick up the flames and move it further. That could have been worse, obviously. Yes. So good news, weather conditions somewhat cooperative with that fire, but not any rain. We didn't see any mm -hmm. rainfall around the air. That would have helped tremendously, but also... That would have stopped the fireworks from going off too if we had the rain so yes and also we just want to let you know that we are getting video in of that fire so stay with us on KLD news 13 and then also your see it snap it send it's adorable shots these little cuties celebrating with a giant flag that looks like it's bigger than them yeah <laughs> we have much more ahead on KLD news 13 live at 10 in about one minute from now we'll see you then